Hello everyone, welcome to Purposely Design. Um, I pray all is well with you. And today I wanted to get into this message that I had um, written this, let's see, December 23rd, but I'm just now getting to it. Um, there's a couple other messages that I will be posting today, but this right here <clears throat> is expounding a little on the last message, the last podcast that I did. And so right now, let's just get into prayer. Father, we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this hour. We thank you, Lord God, for this new year, Lord God, everything that um, we've been praying for, everything that we've been asking you to do, Lord God, in this this by this new year, Lord God, I pray that it will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that um, you have for us, I pray that we will receive in 2023 everything you have for me, everything you have for those that are listening, oh God, to this message. And Father, we just give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory for all that you've already done and everything that you're going to do and everything that you are doing in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. Amen. And so today, I'm expounding a little, like I said, on the things spoken on the other days, uh, the podcast that I had did. Um, I want to say it was, it had to be the 22nd of December, but I want you to know God didn't send you um, to your spouse to sit back, look back and watch as the enemy to, does away with them, no. No, that's not what he came. To. He he didn't bring you together for that. And I want you to go over here to Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastes uh, 4 and 9. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one peril against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I know there's another one that says easily. But Oh God, we just thank you for your word that you are sending forth even today. Father, we thank you. I don't know why. I just got a, something on that. Uh, you know, I believe it's like, you know, you got to give this program. You got to know that you are better together. Um, and I pray that in 2023, you will receive that. You will know that you are better together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, God sent you to get into the trenches and fight with and oftentimes even fight for the person that he has placed you with, uh, connected you with. You know, I'm not just talking relationship um, in, in an intimate level, but also in a spiritual level. Um, people that God have placed into your life. Like we cannot take them for granted. And oftentimes we do. And uh, we see someone going through and instead of us praying for that person or instead of us interceding for them or instead of us trying to give up a helping hand, especially when we know we are able to do it, we sat back and we watch them as they wallow, as they fall, as they go through the things um, as life tears them up instead of getting in there with them and raising them up and praying for them and, and encouraging them. I know oftentimes, sometimes it's hard for you to encourage someone when you have, you're not encouraged yourself. When you're going through something yourself, but you know, sometimes you just have to uh, put that thing to the side because, you know, as we, as we cheer on others, as we do for others, as we um, lift up others, God, find a way to lift us up as well. You know, it just happens like that. Sometimes the person that you're lifting up won't be able to lift you up, but the one that somebody else will come along and Ooh, I feel the son Ah, thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing. Oh, God, I thank you. <sighs> I don't know this message. <laughs> 
it must be, you know, it's just time for this message. I'm telling you so much that he's given me um, concerning 2023. And so let me, let me keep on. Second Corinthians 10 and 1. It says, now I, pa I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent, I am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God into the spirit pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things ap after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today. It's not, it's not always, uh, everything don't always look like what it is. Okay, so let's go into the wheat when we talk about the wheat and the tear. Hallelujah. When we talk about the wheat and the tear, you don't know which one is what until it grows up and fully matures. Sometimes some of us are prematurely making uh, assumption, making um, uh, accusing, making accusations, you know, assuming one thing, but that thing has yet to grow. It's not fully uh, matured yet. So you can't really say, and that's why I talked about, you know, prejudging things, you know, because sometimes, oftentimes we prejudge, we label something and, you know, you don't always see what God is doing in a person. He does it within first, you know, and then it comes out later. And so, you know, even when it comes down to relationships, when God places you with a person and maybe even, like I said, whether it be spiritual, whether it be marital, you know, this this might be your spiritual spouse, your husband, or this might just be your best friend or somebody in a, that's fighting and interceding with you in the spirit. However, a lot of times... <clears throat> All kinds of weapons of warfare will come and attack that relationship, especially if it's God sent. And you have to discern, you have to know God and know what he's doing in that season to know who is for you and who is against you. Because some of some of the very people that you think is against you be the main one cheering you on, be the main one for you, be the main one to look out for you, be the main one that be praying for you. Okay, so you have to. Be careful. And, you know, you know, the word tells us to be careful for nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication. So uh, make your request known unto God. And so we have to constantly pray. We have to constantly consult, seek God, even his knowledge, even his wisdom, you know, his understanding is so important. To know what God is doing and to discern, to know the truth, to, to, to be able to divide the word of truth, to be able to divide and see, is this God or is this me? You know, and sometimes we don't, we get that confused. We don't recognize and know what is of God and what's of us. Because sometimes we get in the way with our own lusts, our own desires, our own temptations. Um, things come to try to... Uh, Pull you away from that thing, that very thing that God has sent you. And you will not recognize it unless you have the spirit of discernment to know the difference. And it's so important to know the difference.
And that's what I'm telling you. So 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communication, I mean, sorry, what communion have light with darkness? This is not to say that God won't save that other person. But because you can become a burden even and even cause you to err, you know, that that thing can become a burden and that or that person, you know, can become a burden or you can become a burden to them because you it's like a war, a tug of war. You got one of them trying to go one way. You got the other trying to go another way. And uh that's why he said, just don't be unequally yoked. You're going to cause yourself more harm than good. You're going to be trying to, to convert this person while this person will be trying to convert you. You know, trying to get you to see it their way. Where, you know, I'm telling you, uh, you know, King Solomon, he made that mistake. And and he uh, got all the women that with different um, beliefs and eventually they turned him. And so you have to recognize and you have to know um, who is who. That's what I'm telling you. Don't allow them to cause you to err. Don't allow them to um, pull you away from God. When God told him, he told them uh, not to continue to take on all those wives. And they eventually turned him from his God. But the scripture also says that the, the uh, sanctified spouse sanctifies the unsanctified spouse. But you must know the reason is because you became one. But know that uh, because you are one, you're not only in a battle with your own flesh, but there's also as well because you're one. And things they're struggling with, you're going to be struggling with. Rather, it's physically you or it's because you're taking on that other person's battle, their other person's issues, their warfare. And so just know that. Um so whatever they have going on, whatsoever God they have made unto themselves, even if it uh, is their own self, is also now a God you have to help bring awareness to in prayer that God will bring down that God and raise himself up in them too. You, uh, the Bible also says to be like-minded. We ought to have the mind of Christ so that we, we can stand against the wiles of the devil. And also we ought to learn to divide, like I said, the word of truth. How do we, how do we do that personally? We look at our thoughts and recognize where are those thoughts coming from. Pay attention to yourself. The word says to think on these things, whatsoever things are loving. Look, if that thought doesn't line up with the word of God, cast it down. Because the word also says to cast down every thought and imagination that comes against the knowledge of God. Everything that goes against his word, spoken and written, because the Bible also says that man ought not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. God's word is powerful, stronger than any two edged sword. As I began to write, uh, we've got to be we got to be bonded, not blinded. That's what I heard. Uh, we got to be bonded. And not blind it. So just because God bound, uh, bind, uh, bonds us together does not mean or fitly joins us together or whatnot. Um, it doesn't mean that we ought to be blinded. Bonded but not blinded. You know, I, I, I believe and I received that major plot twists will be coming. Major doors are about to be open in the year 2023. This is the year of expectancy. We have to be praying, expecting God to do what we're praying for him to do in this year. 
the year of vision and the year of release, a season of turnaround, even for me. Time to take flight. Expect the unexpected. To whom is your heart made subjected? Major breakthroughs for you. God is pushing and pulling us through. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 1 says, Now I, Paul, my, uh, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent is am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as we walk according to the flesh for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds I know I read this already but casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we need to bring those things, hallelujah, uh, into captivity, those thoughts, those imaginations, everything that would, you know, uh, try to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We have to bring it down. Every thought to the obedience, he said, to the obedience of Christ. You know, if we need to get on Christ's level, you know, to his obedience. He obeyed God. And so we ought to do the same. You know, when God is calling us to do something, we ought to do it. And having in readiness to re revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on the things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we. So we are just as you are. You know, you call, you you say you, you cry, well, I am too. And we need that boldness to know that we too are Christ. Even if that person don't believe or think the way we think or know the way we know, know who you are in this season. Because uh, as you know who you are, we can grow into who we are and who we will become, you know. And not only that, but no weapon can form against you can prosper when you know who you are. When you stand on his word, when you stand on his promises, when you stand on who God had called you to be. Yes, yes, I have a gift of prophecy, but yet I am not a prophet. Yes, he gave me that anointing, a prophet's anointing, but yet I am not. I am his disciple and I have to stand on who he had called me to be, his disciple. He said, they all call you evangelists. But you're my disciple. So I stand on his word towards me. And you have to do the same towards you. You have to know who you are. You ought to have known back in 2022. You should have known who you was. And it's not too late to pray and ask God, who am I? And even in 2023, you know, it's not too late. And everything that he has for me, I will receive in 2023. That's the word. He said, major doors shall be open unto you, expecting the unexpected, meaning anything can happen, especially if and when your hearts are made in subject to the will of the Lord. We need to allow the will of the Lord to be more important because that's when the blessings come in. Um, and are able to overtake us when we line up with the will of the Lord. When we line up with the will of God for our lives. Um, Isaiah 28, 9 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that we wean from the milk and uh, drown from the beast. For perception must be upon I mean precept must be upon precept and uh, precept upon precept line up line upon line 
line upon line, here a little and there a little, with uh, stammering lips in another tongue will he speak to his people to whom he said this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they will would not hear but the word of the Lord was up, uh, unto them precept upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken Matthew 12 and 50 says for whosoever shall do the will of my father I know I stress this a lot which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother know that you have to do his will in order for you to be a part of the body you know in order for you to say here well done my good and faithful servant you have to do his will for you you know and everybody's uh Will his will for everybody is different. He sent us all with different talents, you know, and we ought to be striving to fulfill the will that he has sent us to do, just like Christ did for us. We ought to do it too. Okay, John 6 and 38 says, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me, and this is the will. It, this is the Father's will which have sent me that all which he have given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have what everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. Matthew 7 and 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Isaiah 49 and 6 says, And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee a light to the Gentiles that they may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Isaiah 6 and 3 says, And the, the, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Acts 13 and 47 says, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So we have a job to do. John 8 and 12 then spake Jesus again unto them saying I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of what? Life. Acts 26 and 13 says, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round and about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou have seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God 
that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, if, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but should first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great sin, none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Look, God should, Paul, aligned him up with his will for his light and set him to flight. God raised him up to do his will. God prepared him. Even through Paul's own emotions to be driven in such a way that aligned him up to be at the right place at the right time for a right now blessing. God is doing the asunder yet. Hallelujah. God is doing a great work in this hour, in this season. And all those that are, are lined up, all those that uh, know and can feel God shifting things. He's doing some things in 2023. Um, everything. There's some things God has for me and I will possess it in 2023. You know, everything that God has for me, I will receive in 2023. I want you to acknowledge that. I want you to say that. I want you to declare that everything that God has for me, I will receive in 2023. You know, I pray that um, this message, I know it is not that long. It's kind of short, but it's straight to the point. And I just hope and pray that you re re received it and that it will um, fall on good ground and that it will bud and bring forth fruit. And everything that you speak, that it will, especially those things that you speak in faith and expectancy, knowing God is able to do all things but fail. Oh, thank you, Father. When you uh, realize God is in control, when you allow his will to be done in your life, get ready to be set to flight. Everything that he has for me, I will receive in 2023. So, Lord God, we thank you, Father, for your word today. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord God, in this hour, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you are bringing even awareness to all those that are following after you, that are running and chasing after you, that are called uh, uh, by your name, Father, that you are putting us all on one accord with you, that you are lining the asunder out of the air, that you are lining up the body, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to be on one accord with you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing in this hour. We thank you, Lord God, that it's your will that no man be lost. So, Lord God, those that hear this message, quicken the son of the day. In the mighty name of Jesus, quicken that spirit. Put them in alignment with your will and with your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. And thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. And amen. And amen. Oh, God, I pray that this bless you. Hallelujah. On today. Until next time, God bless.